Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to WCLS episode two. We're back and we are ready for another episode of talking about nothing but the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, to start the season, the Lakers are five and five the first ten games. Uh, I, th- I think I'm going to go through every single game individually and I'm just going to s- give my thoughts on all the all of them and see really what went wrong, what we can improve on, um, what we've been doing good. Uh, so to start us off, we the first game of the season, we went against the defending champion Denver Nuggets. And I think me personally, this was our worst game of the season so far. Um, we obviously didn't have Jared Vanderbilt. He hasn't been here for the last for the first ten games of the season. We've had no Jared Vanderbilt, and to be frankly honest, that has been a uh, a big miss for us personally. I think not having our main defensive stopper is really what's stopping us from taking that next step so far this season, at least for me personally, because I I feel like that a lot of these games and our losses, and we'll get to it eventually. Uh, we would have just won if we would have just taken out one guy of the equation, right? We've had one guy every single game who's just beaten us almost single-handedly. Um, Jokic, obviously, was this game. He had a triple-double in the first game of the season, 30 points, 13 rebounds, 11 assists. You're going to see a pattern, I think, every single game. You're going to have one guy that just goes absolutely crazy. And I feel like Jared Vanderbilt will come back and be this guy to stop these one-man armies. And hopefully we're going to stack on a couple more wins. But like I was saying, this was probably our worst game of the season. Anthony Davis only had 17 points. Uh, Torian Prince, this is probably his best performance of the season. Uh, LeBron James was, of course, on his minutes restriction. Nobody knew he was on it until this game tonight, and he only played 29 minutes. Um, he still had 21 points, 8 boards, and 5 assists, so it was great production from him. D'Angelo Russell had a rough opening night as well, 11 points, 4 rebounds, 7 assists. Uh, Austin Reeves also had a very rough opening to this season, of course. Um, but this obviously was the worst game, in, in my opinion. And we still only lost by 12 to the defending champs, who are right now the best team in the league, in my personal opinion. I, I just, we shot terribly from the field, right? We shot terribly from three-point. We had a lot of turnovers. It was just a game that we really shouldn't have won based on our play. And we still kind of kept it in a winnable distance and so I, I really think that that being our worst game of the season I mean at the time we thought uh, we were overreacting right a lot of Lakers fans were overreacting at the time but looking back on it that was our clear-cut worst game of the season and that's not the type of team we are uh, going on to the second game this was much much better performance we played the Phoenix Suns beat them 100 to 95 um, of course, we had that one man go off of 39 points, 11 boards, and two assists. Who else was it but the main man, Kevin Durant? Anthony Davis had his great for his first great game of the season: 30 points, 12 boards, three blocks. Uh, LeBron played 35 minutes this game. So, of course, the first game of the season, uh, it gets out that LeBron's on a minutes restriction. Right? He's on this minutes restriction. He's going to stay under 30 minutes a game. And then game two comes around. And he plays 35 minutes, and we're confused on what's going on. So I think at the end of the day, what's happening is LeBron James is on a minutes restriction through the first three quarters of the game. And then fourth quarter and on, it's up to him on whether he wants to play or not. And that's that's just the vibe I'm getting. Um, another trend that you're going to see is the fourth quarter for us is where we're winning our games. The first quarter... Of this game particularly, the Suns versus Lakers, second game of the season, we lost 30-18 to 18 in the first quarter. Second quarter, we won 30-22. Third quarter, we lost 32-24. to 24. And in the fourth quarter, we won 28-11. to 11. Gigantic run towards the end of the stretch. And that, that's happening a lot this game, right? A lot of our games are close until the end, and then we just keep pulling them out. Um, what me personally as a fan... I would just like to not get to this situation where we're having close games and I'm on the edge of my seat watching every single game because I don't know what's going to happen. Granted, this game was terrible shooting from three. We shot 17% as a team. Uh, Anthony Davis was one for two. Torian Prince, 0 for one. LeBron, one for five. D'Lo, one for seven. Austin Reeves, one for two. Rui Hachimura, one for two. Christian Wood, 0 for two. Gabe Reddish, 0 for three. Gabe Vincent, 0 for five. Um, it was just a terrible shooting night for us. I'm happy they got the win, but I, again, it's another game that just takes more steps. 
And I think that this really was a testament on how much Anthony Davis is going to have to do this season because um, it, it, it's really all on his back, right? I mean, 30 points, it, 30 points, 12 rebounds, three blocks, three steals, putting up defensive player of the year numbers. It's He has to do this every night if we want to be successful like we were in the championship year. Um, it's, it's all up to him, right? LeBron, we all know, is going to come in night and night out. He's averaging, what, 24, I think, this season. He's putting up good numbers. He's playing good minutes. But at the end of the day, it's all on Anthony Davis's back, and he has to show up every single night. And when he doesn't show up, we lose. And it showed. We'll get to it later. Um, against the Rockets, when we had that gigantic game that we got blown out by from the Rockets, that was the one game that Anthony Davis has sat out this season. He's missed one game this season, and we got blown out by 40 from the Rockets. Uh, it's... It's really all on his shoulders, right? Going on to the third game of the season, another thing of the same story, right? We were getting blown out through the first half of the game. First quarter against the Kings, we lost 41-28. to Second quarter, we won 27-25. Third quarter, we won 28-21. Fourth quarter, we actually won 32-28. to So we won quarters two through four. But the fact that we lost the first quarter by so much dug us in such a deep hole that this game went into overtime when we lost in overtime. Now, again, I'm going to go back to this stat right here. The big man for the Sacramento Kings, De'Aaron Fox had 37 points, 8 assists. He was going crazy this game. I remember watching this game, and it seems like he could not miss. It seems like he was going to have another back-to-back season of being um, the clutch player of the year. And this was another game where I think it really hit us as Lakers fans that Austin Reeves is struggling this year, right? One for 12 from the field, one for eight from three, five points, negative 12 in the plus minus. He really didn't do anything good all game. (laughs) He he didn't. Gabe Vincent played 32 minutes, and it, it was only because Austin Reeves has been having such a down year this year. And obviously, he's starting to pick it up. Last night against the Trailblazers, he... Had a good game, actually. He had a good game off the bench. But it's it's a learning period for him. And I think for Austin Reeves particularly, a lot is changed from last season, right? He had this big blow-up game last season, a big blow-up season last season. Um, and I think it's it, it's not all obviously all because, because he's a great player, right? But a lot of it is because he, nobody was game planning for him, right? You see the Lakers on the schedule. And the coaches go into the their offices, and they game plan for Anthony Davis, and they game plan game plan for LeBron James. Sorry, and Austin Reeves really isn't on the radar at all, right? This season, because of what he did last year, because of what he did in FIBA over the summer, teams are coming in and they're game planning for him, right? They're saying, "Hey, if we shut down LeBron, if we shut down Anthony Davis, we're still gonna have to worry about Austin Reeves. So this is what we're gonna do about him." and I think that's getting to his head a little bit because he can't really get anything going. Um, we'll just we'll go to his game log here. But me personally, it's just something that Austin Reeves has to figure out right now. It's a learning period on how to deal with uh, being game planned for night in, night out. And now obviously he's coming off the bench. I don't know if that's strictly the answer. Maybe it's there's a confidence thing too involved with it. But from going how he played in the playoffs last year he averaged what was it here let me pull it up for a second he averaged 17 points per game in the playoffs last season and now he's back down to 13 points per game for the regular season so far um it's and it's just really something that i think he's gonna have to figure out and it's definitely a confidence thing as well um of course, against Houston, he only had seven points. Miami, he did have 23 points, which was a good game for him. He was plus two. Um, this, it, it was still ended in a loss. But, I mean, it's it's something when you can look at Austin Reeves and say, hey, he's actually making a step in the right direction. Uh, Houston was his worst game of the season. He was negative 28. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's tough for him because you have to – figure out what he's going through and obviously we know he has the ability because of what we saw in FIBA because of what we saw last season you know he has the ability to do it 
every team knows he's he has the ability to do it. He just needs to go out there and actually put in the work and realize that he can't go into the game every single game like he did last season because he needs to go in knowing he's going to get game plan for it. And one thing that in particular that's bothering me from an Austin Reeves standpoint is the foul baiting. Uh, obviously last year he got a lot of his points off of free throws and I, it's I feel like he's going every single time he touches the ball, he's driving to the bucket and he's relying on the foul call, right? From just a fan's point of view, I don't want to see you doing that, right? Because I know Austin Reeves can get his points from pick and rolls, from hitting tough middies like he did. He could get it from catch and shoot threes like he has been. I don't want, I don't think it's a trustworthy thing to have Austin Reeves try to bait a foul every single time that he drives to the basket. And it's not working so far this season. He's not getting the calls. And so at some point, he just has to realize that I need to stop foul baiting. I need to go up strong. I need to get to my spots. And I need to do what works for me. Um, which brings us to the next game of the season against the Orlando Magic, which we only won by three. Um, again, the second quarter, we lost it by nine points. That's really what dug us our hole. Uh, we won every other quarter. It, it, I mean, we just need to find a way to early in the game stay strong because if we play like every if we play like how we do in the fourth quarter throughout every single quarter of every game we're winning every game by like 30 um this game was fun to watch obviously it was against the magic so you do have to take a little bit off of it anthony davis had 26 points 19 boards five assists um obviously torian prince he he doesn't. He's never there really in the box score. But Torian Prince always has the defensive plays. He's playing good uh, hustle game. He's doing the dirty work really. LeBron James had 19 points, four assists, three steals, three rebounds. Um, obviously, we can't rely on LeBron James every single night as well. Uh, he, he's getting to the age. He's how old, and we're still trying to rely on him to be the guy that he was when he was with the Miami Heat. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, the game of the season for him. 28 points, 10 for 14 from the field, 3 for 6 from 3, 5 for 5 from free throw line, 8 assists, a steal and a block, 2 boards. He was really out there just he, – he, I don't want to say he put the team on his back, right? But there was definitely minutes during that game where we had struggles with LeBron and AD off the court, right? This was the fourth game of the season. And the first three games, the big talk was how are the Lakers going to – produce without LeBron on the court because we were we were definitely struggling without him. Of course, the press conference of game 1, LeBron said in the he, he, LeBron said himself, "I was positive in the stat sheet." So that's all I'm worried about. I don't know if that's what he said word for word obviously, but he said something along the lines of he he was positive in the stat sheet, so he was doing his job. Um and this game D'Angelo Russell just when LeBron was off the court, he provided um and that's the type of guy I think the Lakers need is when Austin Reeves has been struggling so far this season, which he has, when LeBron James is off the court, because let's be honest, we can't expect an old man who's in his 21st year in the NBA to consistently play 30 minutes. We can't rely on him every single game. We need a man like D'Angelo Russell every single night that can provide in those spots that we are falling back a little bit. And I think he can do that to a T. Um, of course, D'Angelo Russell is getting a lot of hate this season again. And I think a lot of it has been rollover from previous season's playoff performance. But I really just – there's a couple things I want to say just as a D'Angelo Russell fan. And that's I think he fits almost perfectly in this team, right? Obviously, he's ninth in, um, he's ninth in total assists. He's 10th in assists per game in the league so far this season. Um, he has one of the best assist-to-turnover ratios as well. I think his playmaking is something that you need along with Anthony Davis, right? Another fact is that no player, no LeBron teammate in history has done the passing numbers that D'Angelo Russell has put up, right? Nobody has been top 10 in assists per game and top 10 in total assists. Now, I think that's because LeBron obviously is demanding the ball so much. He's doing the majority of the playmaking. But again... This is a different era in LeBron's career. And if D'Angelo Russell can step up and handle the playmaking job, which I think he can, and he obviously have been this season. Of course, last night during the Blazers, he had 11 assists, 
with one turnover. Um, he's just he's a great floor general for this team, and I think he fits perfectly, especially when LeBron is on the court and LeBron wants to go back to his old style of play, which he's making all the plays. D'Angelo Russell is a great catch and shooter. Um, obviously, he's a very quick release off the catch and shoot, and he's willing to play off the ball. And I think one underrated fact about D'Angelo Russell here, and I'm going to pull it up because I think he got a lot of hate the other night against, let me see here for just one second, against the Suns, against the Suns the other night. He didn't play, he didn't get a single minute during the fourth quarter, right? Uh, we won the fourth quarter 33-23. to 23. We went on a giant run to come back against the Suns, and D'Angelo Russell didn't get a single minute in the fourth quarter. I think what a lot of players would do in that situation is complain about in the press conference. They'd say something on social media or they would just look down in the dumps on the bench. Um, D'Angelo Russell was the complete opposite, right? Right after the game, what do he do? Boom. Post a picture of Cam Reddish and say how, his, how, like how good he played because he played amazing against the Suns the other night. Um, he was cheering. He's the most uh, like energetic guy on the bench during that whole entire fourth quarter. And he didn't get a single minute. He's willing to make the sacrifices. He's willing to make the winning plays. So obviously, in the beginning of the season, what did he say? He wanted to be like Derek White. And what does Derek White do? He makes winning plays. And what has D'Angelo Russell been doing this season? Making winning plays. Um, speaking of Cam Reddish, obviously, we have been inserting Cam Reddish into the starting lineup for the last two games. Or the last three games or something, I believe. Um, but obviously, he got to start last night over Austin Reeves. Um of course, in oh, against it was against this game. I'm sorry, it was against the Suns. He got the start over Austin Reeves because Austin Reeves has had such a struggle this season that the starting lineup went from D'Lo, AR, uh, Torian, LeBron, AD to D'Lo, Cam Reddish, Torian, LeBron, AD. Um, obviously, it's not ideal right because we want to see Austin Reeves in the position to succeed and we know he can be um, a very impactful player for this team but fit wise Cam Reddish has been playing great Um, and it's not just like in the scoring aspect if we would expect it it's the hustle plays it's the defense and of course against the clip when Cam Reddish got his first start of the season when Torian Prince went down he showed up in overtime, right? Cam Reddish was there. He was locking down. He got the Paul George assignment. And obviously, he didn't stop Paul George because that's darn almost impossible. Paul George still had 35 in the night. Uh, Kawhi had 38. Westbrook had 24. AD had 27. LeBron had 35. D'Lo had 27. This is such a high-scoring night. It was such a fun game to watch. But Cam Reddish came up with three steals and a block, right? It, he was just there. He was hustling. He was on every play. He was just trying to insert himself as much as he can, and that's all we can ask for in a team like this. Um, of course, Anthony Davis has been criticized the last couple of years, however, um, how he doesn't want to play center. He doesn't want to do the dirty work down there with the bigs. What we've been missing, I think, the last couple seasons since the bubble championship, we had Caruso, we had uh, JaVale McGee, we had these guys who would just bring energy and bring grit. And I think with the last few years of teams, that's one of the pieces that we've just been missing. And Cam Reddish, uh, Torian Prince, and Jared Vanderbilt, when he comes back, those are three guys who are just adding that to our team. And Cam Reddish is doing it at an elite level right now. He's just disrupting and doing his best to just insert himself in his game through his hustle play. And, I mean, as a fan, that's all you can ask. As someone who wanted Cam Reddish to succeed, obviously, two years ago, I put out a tweet that said my top three fit. The top three favorite players under 21 was Tyrese Maxey, Kevin Porter Jr., and Cam Reddish, right? I wanted to see all three of those guys succeed. Obviously, Tyrese Maxey last night had his big 50-point outburst. Uh, Kevin Porter Jr., we just won't get into it. He's not on the team anymore. Cam Reddish now on my favorite team, and he's playing a role that I would never expected him to play. Um, coming out of college, he was a guy that was a sh- great shooter, a great scorer, um, and an average defender. And he's really just transformed his game to be a f- fantastic role player so far in this season. Uh, but, yeah, that going talking more about that Clippers game, 
we went into overtime in that game as well. It was another game where I think D'Angelo Russell held us into the game. Um, there was a spurt, again, where LeBron was out. We were struggling to find points, and D'Angelo Russell kept called for the ball, called a couple isos, and he got some big buckets down the stretch. Another six-assist game for him. Austin Reeves had another struggle night from this. Um, and Christian Wood really showed how much he's willing to be a winning player, right? He's a guy, obviously, who's been on um, how many how many years he's been in the league even. But I, he's been on a different team every single year he's been in the league, right? He's never really been known as a uh, guy who's willing to sacrifice for to make the winning plays. He's always been a guy that um, is just there to put up numbers, right? He's just there. Uh, he's played, let's see here. He's in his, holy macro, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth year in the league, and he's had eight different teams. Um, it, it's, it's, it's something that you really like to see, a guy who hasn't ever been known to sacrifice his own self. This is a guy who went from 21 points in Houston to 16 points in Dallas, and now he's at seven points per game playing for the Lakers. But he doesn't care because of how much winning plays he's making day in and day out. He's coming in. He's playing great defense. He's putting in the hustle work. And he's hitting big shots. Um, it's another guy who I'm happy to make sacrifices. And it seems like the Lakers have, are on a reoccurring theme of this, right? Um, it happened with Malik Monk. It happened with uh, Lonnie Walker. It's happening with Cam Reddish. And it's happening with Christian Wood. Guys who... Um, have struggled throughout their career um and then they come to the lakers and they change their identity a little bit and they become a whole brand new player um but yeah it, it's it's really nice to see as a fan after the clippers game we went back to orlando and played against them obviously lost in a tough one um these are the type of games that you just can't lose uh making the playoffs for the lakers is going to be dependent on beating teams that you're supposed to, right? That's the name of the game. If you want to make the playoffs, you beat the teams that you're supposed to. And um, <laughs> the Magic are a team that we should beat, and we lost to them by 19. There's not much to say. Everybody had a down game pretty much except Anthony Davis. Um, even LeBron struggled a little bit. Uh, I didn't really watch much of the game. I kind of got irritated and just turned it off. But it, it's one of those games that you should win and you hope to win every single time. But they obviously let one slip. Moving on to the game against the Heat where we lost by one point. This, again, is a team that I'll just quarter by quarter. First quarter, we tied 33-33. Second quarter, lost 26-29. Third quarter, lost 20-28. Fourth quarter, we won 28-18. In no world should you be winning the fourth quarter by 10 points and still losing the game. This is a reoccurring theme. Uh, again, with the reoccurring themes, Bam Adebayo had 19 boards, 10 assists, and 22 points. These are guys that are just coming in and are beating us almost by themselves at this point. And that's something that we just have been missing for Jared Vanderbilt, a one-man stopper that we can just throw him on and he can just do, his, do what he does best. Anthony Davis, obviously – had a huge struggle this night. Nine points, six boards, four assists. That obviously also could have played a big factor. Austin Reeves, this is one of his best games of the season, obviously. 23 points. And it's obviously not what you want to see to score, outscore the other team by 10 points and still lose the game. But I, we just need to figure out a way, and I think that's one of the keys that we'll be looking at the rest of the season, is winning the game early on. Right. If we can win the game early, then we can we, we've won almost every fourth quarter we've played in. Right. We just need to figure out how to win the game in the first three quarters and not just only win in the fourth. Um, after that, we lost to 40 by the Rockets. I'm not even going to talk about that. That's all. After the Rockets, we went back to the Suns, beat them. Of course, that was a big camera shot. Um, not big camera shot, but wait, it was the big camera shot. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Cam Reddish, obviously, the other night they said against the Heat, uh, LeBron passed up the shot to Cam Reddish. He missed it. Uh, he got criticized for it. Again, this game, he did the exact same thing, kicked it out for Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish made the shot and iced the game. Uh, 
I mean, what can you say about LeBron? He, he's one of the best minds in basketball. He always makes the right play. He said it himself. Uh, another great game for D'Angelo Russell. Nine assists, nine point, 19 points, sorry. One turnover. Anthony Davis, 18 points, 11 boards, four assists. I think our recipe for winning, and I'll just make a couple points here to end off the episode because – I think from my perspective personally, there's three main things that we can do to win games more often, right? One is literally just winning the game early, right? We've been in such close games all season just because we lose in the first three quarters. We come back in the fourth, and it just becomes a close game. Secondly, I think all the players on the team just need a little bit more confidence, right? Uh, LeBron is showing up every game. D'Lo has always had that confidence. Um, Anthony Davis, sometimes he'll come in and, and it'll just it, it, it'll look like it's not there for him. Uh, Austin Reeves, obviously another guy this season who just needs his confidence a little bit, right? And I think coming off the bench for him has actually been very beneficial because he can kind of just run the second unit. And that's what we kind of want him to do in the first unit, right, is when LeBron and AD are not having their best t- moments – have Austin Reeves step up and be the guy that he can be. We know he, he can be. Um, and the third point that I think is the biggest one, and that's just be like stop the star. Look at the other team. Look who their best players are and stop them because that's how we have lost all these games. It's been huge outbursts by Bam out of bio. It's been big outbursts from De'Aaron Fox. It's been big outbursts from – Nikola Jokic, it was almost a big outburst from Paul George before he fouled out of the game, and we won that game in overtime. Um, it's just, We need to stop the star, and I just think that's one of the biggest points that we have been uh, struggling at. Anyways, thank you for listening to the second episode of WCLS. Again, we're just overreacting. Obviously, this is the only 10 games into the season. Not a single game yet with Jared Vanderbilt. Uh and we're still figuring some things out, I think. But there's a lot of good signs, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the year. Um, the Lakers don't play until tomorrow night, I believe. So, yeah. I mean, we'll hopefully see you on Friday for a regular episode of the Wildcast. But till then, thank you for listening. Make sure you listen on all the auto platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for the uh, audio over there. Thank you very much for listening. And peace.